Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to predict molecular structure for molecules with linear, trigonal planar, or tetrahedral electron pair geometries using valence shell electron pair repulsion or Vesper theory. The super. Okay, so as always, let's take a couple moments and break it down. First thing we're gonna do is explain what the heck this valence shell electron pair repulsion theory is. The super theory. And then two, we are going to predict the electron geometry or molecular geometry of a molecule using this Vesper theory. So basically, this video is all about what are the shapes of the molecules and how does Vesper theory help us predict what those shapes will be okay so commonly in class you're gonna hear me say Vesper theory that abbreviation VSEPR stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion and it simply refers to the fact that there is repulsion between pairs of valence electrons on the atoms in a molecule. Like charges, don't like hanging out by one another. So they are going to repel or push one another away. Now, couple of things to think about when it comes to Vesper theory. Recognize that the repulsion between the sets of valence level electrons surrounding an atom causes those sets to be oriented as far away as possible. So those valence electron pairs are trying to get as far away from the other valence electron pairs as possible. Again, like charges, don't want to hang out in the same space. So as you take a look at your screen, we've got a depiction of a Lewis structure for the molecule CCL4. And on paper, when we draw that Lewis structure, it looks like those bonded pairs of electrons can only get about 90 degrees from one another. But it turns out that in the three-dimensional real world, they can actually get a little further apart by taking advantage of the third dimension. And in reality, those shared pairs of electrons are 109.5 degrees from one another. And Vesper theory is all about predicting what those three dimensional shapes are going to be. Couple of other quick notes about Vesper theory before we actually start using it to predict the shapes on our own. Recognize that lone pairs of electrons are gonna repel more strongly than bonded pairs of electrons and will affect the angles in the geometry of the molecule. And so, as you take a look at your notes or as you take a look at the image on the screen, notice here if my central nitrogen atom was bonded to four individual atoms, the bond angles would be exactly 109.5 degrees. However, in a molecule like ammonia, NH3, where three of those pairs of electrons are bonded and one is a lone pair, recognize that the bond angle is slightly less than that 109.5 degrees. And that's because that lone pair can actually repel a little more strongly. And it can do that because there's no bonded atom, there's no positive core that's attracting those electrons. And as you take a look at that second image, recognize that each additional lone pair of electrons is gonna push those bond angles a little closer together. Also important to note that double and triple bonds are treated the same as a single bond in terms of ability to repel electrons. So many times when we work through Vesper theory, we'll be talking about regions of electron density or electron domains. And we do that because a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond all have the same ability to repel. Now, use Vesper theory essentially to predict the electron geometry and molecular geometry of a molecule, or what the heck is going on with the shape of a molecule. And we do so by determining the total regions of electron density around that central atom. And then we think about how many of those regions are lone pair regions of electrons. Keep in mind, for those of you coming back for AP Chemistry, when you do have more than one central atom, the geometry is usually described around each of those atoms individually. And then lastly, there's really two geometries that you have to describe when you're describing the geometry of a molecule. The first is the electron geometry, and this is going to describe the geometry of all of the electrons, both lone pairs and bonded pairs of electrons around the central atom. And so as you look at this example of ammonia, the electron geometry is a tetrahedral shape. Again, describing the shape of all of the electrons about that central atom. Not only the lone pair of electrons, but each of the bonded pairs of electrons as well. The molecular geometry, on the other hand, is only gonna describe the geometry of the atoms about the central atom, or essentially only those electrons involved in bonds. 
So if you come back to this image, the molecular geometry of ammonia molecule is trigonal pyramidal, where we just described the geometry of the atoms. We aren't concerned about the lone pair. And so ultimately then, we will use Vesper theory to help us predict the different shapes of the molecules depending on how many total regions of electron density there are about that central atom, and then how many of those total regions are lone pair regions. Now, Vesper theory, like many things in chemistry, is something that just takes a little bit of time to practice. And once you practice it, you're gonna become really familiar with and almost second nature, determine the shapes of your different molecules. So don't get scared off by all these crazy looking shapes. I promise you with a little bit of practice, this will become very easy. All right, so last couple of things. It's really difficult to describe the shapes of those molecules in three-dimensional shapes, especially if you're a terrible artist. And so what you're gonna start seeing is instead of just a straight line, you'll see these hatched wedges and solid wedges to help better illustrate in three dimensions what's going on with our Lewis structure that also incorporates the shapes of the molecules. And as you take a look at your notes, there's a really great reference to help you get started Again, it just takes some practice, and we'll be doing a lot of that in class. All right, and that's it for this video. Have a fantastic day.